This is the second in a series of two lectures on the lymphatic system. This slide and the next three will give you a bit of the early history of AIDS in the United States. Just read through them and watch the short video, but do not memorize any of the information on these four slides. Unless otherwise indicated, you should learn all the information on the following slides. The United States AIDS statistics are as follows. Currently, 1 in 250 in the United States is infected with the HIV virus. It affects certain populations more than others. For example, it's the eighth lead. You do not need to memorize this information, but I hope you will put this slide in slide presentation mode and read through it. These statistics cover the incidence of HIV-positive individuals and the occurrence of full-blown AIDS in Cincinnati, Ohio, the United States, and worldwide. You do not need to memorize these numbers. Since the year 2000, more females than males have become infected with the HIV virus. The HIV virus cannot live out in the environment. It must be in a host cell. That host cell is a white blood cell called the T4 cell. T4 cell is a kind of a lymphocyte, which is a type of white blood cell. We've studied that already. T4 cells have many important roles in the immune system, like protecting us from viral infections, bacterial infections, and fungal infections. They also are important in producing antibodies and fighting cancer, and most importantly, in supporting other cells in the immune system. Sometimes they're called the camp counselor. So when these cells are infected, it is a problem to the entire immune system. The virus is not spread by fluids that have a low white blood cell concentration. So you would not pick it up from a doorknob or a mosquito bite or a toilet seat. You would not pick up the HIV virus through saliva, sweat, tears, urine, or feces. The HIV virus cannot be spread by sharing drinking glasses or by casual kissing. The risk of spreading the virus through deep kissing, in which large amounts of saliva would be exchanged, is very low. Only one unproven case has ever been reported. Fluids with high white blood cell concentrations can spread the virus. Fluids with high white blood cell concentrations include blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. When considering blood, you need to think about blood transfusions. The blood supply has been tested since 1985, but there is still a 1 in 500,000 risk of contracting the HIV virus through a transfusion. IV needles are another possibility. Tattoos and ear piercings and steroids, and these would be injectable steroids. Secretions of semen and the vaginal fluids have a high concentration of white blood cells. Breast milk has a high concentration of white blood cells. There is a 1 in 3 chance of a mother passing the HIV virus to a child when breastfeeding. All newborns of HIV positive mothers will test positive for the virus at birth because mother has passed along her antibodies. So these babies have to be retested at 18 months to know for sure. At this time, they should have eliminated all of mother's antibodies. AZT during pregnancy seems to help reduce the number of infected babies born to HIV-positive mothers. This timeline shows you the sequence of events from infection to development of full-blown AIDS. Infection is the initial event, after that is a short window period, and then a long HIV-positive asymptomatic period. After that, the HIV-positive symptomatic followed by full-blown AIDS. We'll talk about each of these stages on the next slide. Infection is exactly that. It's the time when the person became infected with the HIV virus, and it's followed by flu-like symptoms for about two to four weeks. After that, the window period is the time from infection to actually testing positive for the virus, and that takes about three to six months. The HIV-positive asymptomatic stage is a time when the patient will test positive for the HIV virus but will show no symptoms and can last anywhere from 7 to 15 years. The HIV positive symptomatic period is when the person tests positive for the HIV virus but begins to show symptoms and it lasts for anywhere from about 3 to 7 years. 
AIDS is the last stage, and it's a time when there are full-blown symptoms. And these will last anywhere from about three to five years. The symptoms you expect to see if you are HIV positive symptomatic are things like night sweats, and that's very profuse sweating in the middle of the night. It's enough that it would be necessary to change sheets and change your bed clothes. Fever, unexplained weight loss, and this is at least 10 pounds or more. Diarrhea, fatigue, and vaginal infections. In order to diagnose full-blown AIDS, two things have to be true. Number one, the person must test positive for the HIV virus. And then either one of two things. They must have a T-cell count of 200 or less. Normal is about 1,000 to 1,200 or they can have an opportunistic infection. An opportunistic infection is an infection that occurs because of some sort of compromise in the immune system. It is an opportunity for a microorganism to invade. I'm going to give you just a few of these, and they are the ones that relate to the HIV virus. The first one is PCP, known as pneumocystis carini pneumonia. It is a parasite, and it attacks the lungs. The second is Kaposi sarcoma, which is a cancer of the blood vessels, and it has an appearance of purple skin blotches, and you can see this on the slide at the right. This is another example of someone with the HIV virus and a compromised immune system with Kaposi sarcoma. Three more common opportunistic infections for those with a compromised immune system, like someone with the HIV virus, are CMV, which is cytomegalovirus, TB, tuberculosis, and cervical cancer. Three very important ways to help stop the spread of the HIV virus are to not share needles, sexual abstinence, and safer sex. Safer sex would include using a latex condom, not a natural skin condom, and the reason is the natural skin condoms more readily tear. You want to use a water-based lubricant because oil-based lubricants dissolve the latex condom. You want to use a spermicide with non-oxanol 9 and choose a low-risk sexual activity. Condoms have a shelf life of eight years and there are dates on the packages so be sure you check that. It's important to store it away from heat and in the dark. You don't want to store it in your glove compartment though because it's warm there and it can affect the condom. Just give it to your mom, she'll keep it for you. It's important to have a plan ahead of time and to stick to it. The prevention of HIV begins with you. Here are things that will kill the virus. Unfortunately, these are not things that you can ingest. They include bleach, heat, oxygen, and alcohol. Here is a list of the drugs most commonly used to treat those infected with the HIV virus. Those drugs include AZT, probably the oldest drug, DDI, DDC, D4T, and a group of drugs known as the protease inhibitors. Combinations of these drugs work the best instead of using them just by themselves. And the best combinations are AZT, DDI, and the protease inhibitors, AZT, DDC, and the protease inhibitors. Each of these drugs or groups attacks a different part of the virus, and together they are more effective. The most common test for the HIV virus is not a test for the virus itself, but a test for the antibody that the virus causes the body to produce. There are three primary tests, and they are the ELISA, which is less expensive than the other two, but the problem is they have many false positives. Western blot is much more accurate, but it's expensive, and IFA is much more accurate, but also more expensive. Here is information about two home testing kits. Please read this information. And here is a test that tests for the virus directly. It's an RNA test, and instead of testing for antibodies, it tests for the virus itself. If you go to a clinic to be tested for the HIV virus, this is most likely the sequence of tests that they will administer. First, the ELISA test. If it's negative, then they stop. It's HIV negative diagnosis. If it's positive, they test again because remember this is not a very accurate test, but it's inexpensive. Second time, they'll test again with the ELISA test. If it's negative, they stop because this is considered HIV negative. If it's positive, they will test again, this time with a more expensive and a more accurate test, the Western blot or the IFA. If it's negative, the person is HIV negative. If this one is positive, the diagnosis is HIV+. For more information, click on this link.
So what's the outlook for the AIDS epidemic? Will there ever be a cure? And the answer is, it's likely there will not be a cure in your lifetime if there's ever a cure. Remember, this is a virus like the common cold is a virus, and the common cold has been around for a long time, and there's still no cure. Is there any hope, or what is the hope? The hope is that the drugs that are being developed will keep infected people symptom-free for longer periods of time so they can lead a more normal life. I hope you'll take a moment to read through this anonymous quote that I found. I think you'll find it interesting. Only one person is known to have been cured of the HIV virus, and that occurred in 2008. Read a little about that here.